Guys, I just want to start off by, let's make this real practical. I want to ask you a question. I want you to be honest with me. And if you feel like the person sitting next to you is not honest, just give them an elbow right there on the ribs to keep everyone straight. How many of you would say at some point in your life you've made a really stupid decision? <laughs> yeah. If there's any of you that didn't raise your hand, hopefully you recognize that was a stupid decision because your ribs hurt right now. Today we're talking about wisdom. You know, to some degree, the uh, sum total of our lives are uh, made up by the decisions that we make. If you think about that, I mean, we make decisions all through our lives that affect us in a great way. Uh, the decisions start when you're young, you know. Uh, do I date this girl or this boy or do I not? Do, uh, do I decide to go to college or do I not? Do I go into this work field or not? Do I marry this person? Do we have kids? You know, there's decisions that affect us all along the way. And in life, as, as we continue to grow older, the decisions uh, look a lot different. It's do I continue to stay in this job or do I work for a different position? Is it time for me to retire is it time for me to come out of retirement? Uh, it, all of the decisions that we make in life affect us in such a huge way. And there's some decisions that seem bigger than others. You know, the do I marry this person? Um, some that are a lot smaller. Do I go after this job position or this job position? But they all affect us. And in fact, uh, if we look back on our lives, you could, you could recognize that you are where you are today as a result of the decisions you've made. Whether they're good decisions or bad decisions, you're here uh, as a result today of the decisions you made. Now, for some of us that aren't exactly where we want to be, uh, we can tend to want to cast blame. And so, you know, well, I I'm where I am today because of decisions other people have made. You know, if my parents would have uh, made my childhood a little bit better, if they would have helped me out a little bit more as a kid, uh, if my spouse would not have left me, if I wouldn't have lost a job, if the economy wouldn't have turned around the way it did, then I would be in a different place. And we can tend to cast blame outwardly and say, you know what, it's because of circumstances on the outside. That's why I am at where I am today. But see, regardless of your circumstances, whether they're good or bad around you, we have to all recognize that um, we are where we are today as a result of the decisions we've made. And there's some of us in here that you'd look around and go, you know, there are people that are right where they want to be. They're, they're in their 40s and the prime of their life, and they've got, they've got so much going for them. They're right where they want to be, and I don't know, how, how did I miss that? How am I not where they are? And they're, they're there as a result of good decisions. And you can look at that in every age group. You can look at people that are younger than you and go, you know, how are they in their 20s? How are they at that place in their 20s when it took me till I was much older to be able to get there? And then there are many of us in this room that maybe you're here today because you've been making bad decision after bad decision after bad decision, and you're just hoping, hopefully God can somehow help me to not make bad decisions anymore. And that becomes like your, your primary goal in life is like, maybe somehow I could just stop doing stupid things, you know? Well, the good news for you is that God is your Heavenly Father, and your Heavenly Father, like any good father, wants to guide you and, and direct you and give you wisdom today. So, um, just one more question for you. How many of you would say, you know what, that no matter what stage I am in life today, I wish I had more wisdom? How many of you would say that? All right, then turn to the person next to you, tell them, listen up. Proverbs 4, 7 says this. Getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. Wow. If you open up your Bible and you find a verse that says, this is the most important thing you can do. That is a bold statement. He says, getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. And whatever else you do, get good judgment. You know, I, I think we need to pause for a moment and really look at what a definition of wisdom is and, and break it down. Because wisdom, I think, by our culture is broken down as a synonym of being knowledgeable, being smart, and experienced. And and really, that's not at all what the Bible says that wisdom is, because we can see by example through the Bible and by example of people who live in our lives around us that there are a lot of very smart people who, make, who do not make wise decisions. There are a lot of people that have major degrees, and they've got their master's in this area, their doctorate in this area, and we recognize that they can't or they don't have the ability to make wise decisions. See, wisdom is knowing the truth and putting it to action. 
Wisdom is knowing the truth and putting it to action. And it's knowing God's truth. If you want to have God's wisdom and put it to action, God will make you incredibly wise. It's defined in James 3.17. This is talking about wisdom. It says, but wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving and gentle at all times and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and good deeds. It shows no partiality and is always sincere. So this says that God's wisdom makes a difference in your relationships. That means the wisdom from God is practical for, for making your life better in everyday life. And we have to recognize that, uh, that God's wisdom is different than man's wisdom. God's wisdom is different than just the, the knowledge of our world. Because there's a lot of different areas, in fact, three main areas uh, that, that God's wisdom differs from, from what man would just consider smart. When it comes to relationships, to finances, and to your spiritual walk. If you look at what the world says about relationships and what the world says about finances and what it says about your spiritual walk, you are going to come up with a lot of ideas that are completely 180 degrees in the opposite direction of what God says is true about those areas. So God gives us wisdom in different areas and says, uh, okay, I know the world tells you to treat your relationships a specific way, but I tell you to serve in your relationships. I know the world tells you that you're the boss. You, you worked your way up the ladder. You don't, you don't have to put yourself down on that level anymore, but I tell you, you're the one that needs to serve them. If you want to be the first, you've got to be the last. You've got to put yourself down on the bottom. God gives us wisdom, and it's so completely in a different direction than what we feel like is normal. It's something that people get hung up on all the time. We just took an offering where, where people would say, well, what seems right to me, what seems normal to me, is that I keep all my money for myself. But God says, no, when it comes to your finances, I can bless you if you show generosity towards me with your finances. It's like, well, that's different. That's in a, a complete different direction. But it's not good enough to just know the truth and know God's word. You have to put it to action. In fact, I, I've counseled people so many different times where, where they've made a mistake and I've asked them the question, well, did you know that God says that that's a bad idea? And the answer so many times comes back, yeah, I knew it was bad. And now I'm suffering all the pain. I'm suffering the consequences because I knew what was right, but I, I didn't do it anyways. I, I decided I, I, I knew it would be bad for me, but I, I, I just wanted to go a different direction. Proverbs 8, 11 says, For wisdom is far more valuable than rubies. Nothing you desire can be compared with it. So wisdom is choosing to live the truth, to put God's truth to action every day of your life. In the short amount of time we have together, I want to talk about four things you and I can do, four things you and I can choose to do today in order to become more wise over the years. And these four things we find in the Bible, it's very clear. God says if you want to become a wise person and start making wise decisions, you got to do these four things. The first thing, Respect God's power. Respect God's power. We have to get to a place where we recognize that God is powerful and we start respecting that. This is just about respecting God. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 9.10, it says, Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fear of the Lord. The Bible says that you and I should have a fear of the Lord. And see, when I was younger, and I, I grew up in a little Baptist church where uh, they taught us all these little Bible lessons on these little boards with flannel graph, and they'd tell us about these different principles. And whenever they talked to us kids about fearing God, it really confused me. It's like I, it, I really started building up this idea of the fact that, okay, if, uh, if I'm supposed to be scared of God, does that mean that God is like up in heaven right now and he's watching everything I'm doing going, okay, I'm waiting for you to mess up so I can strike you down. And, and that's kind of something I, I started feeling like as a kid, I should be afraid of God. We started singing these songs, you know, be careful little eyes what you see, be careful little ears what you hear because the Father up above is looking down and I'd forget the in love part. He's looking down because he's waiting for me to mess up. Well, see, when, when the Bible talks about fearing God, it, it's, it's not about being afraid of God because God's out to get you. We know the character of God is that he has a character of love. So when it talks about fearing, it talks about truly respecting that he is the authority in every area of our life. Truly respecting the fact that, that I recognize the very next breath I can take, I only can take that because he gives me breath. 
The fact that I have this job, I only have my job because he's given it to me. The relationships I have, I only have them because he's given them to me. I recognize he is all-powerful, and, and I, re, I have a healthy respect for his power. See, I'm a hunter. Many of you have heard the stories for, for years and years, and, and you know that I'm a hunter, so I'm a gun owner. I've got guns at my house, and I'm not fearful of my guns, but I have a healthy respect of them. You know, I'm not afraid of my guns, but I know their power. I know what they could do, so I treat them with respect. And that's what a healthy fear is. That's what God wants us to understand when it comes to him, is recognizing how powerful he is, but, and also recognizing his grace and his love and respecting him in that way. And once you do that, once you start to recognize how powerful God is, it makes this next verse a little bit easier to do. Proverbs 3, 7 says, don't be impressed with your own wisdom. This is Proverbs 3, 7. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn your back on evil. So we turn our back on evil because we respect God. And in doing so, we recognize I'm not as smart as I once thought I was. This is recognizing you don't know everything. You can't be impressed with your own wisdom. Know-it-alls are never wise people. When you get to a point where you're like, you know, I, I think I know it all. I think I've got this all figured out. I've heard this before. Once we get to that point, that's when we start, stop listening to the wisdom of God and, and start listening to our own wisdom. And God's saying, don't be impressed by your own wisdom. Turn your back on that. Instead, respect God, fear God. Think of it this way. What if, what if you were in a conversation at your office, and maybe you're talking about computer uh, issues, and in the room walks an expert on computers, whether it be the late Steve Jobs or, or Bill Gates, and they come and sit down at the end of the table. And what if you have your entire conversation about your computer problems and you never even acknowledge the intelligent person at the end of the table? What does that say to them? First of all, it's a huge lack of respect because it says, I don't, I don't agree that you are the authority on this issue, so I'm not even going to ask you and consider what you have to say in this area. It's, it's a sign of a lack of respect. And when we respect God, we're saying, you know what? I recognize that God is in this situation with me. So for me to go through this decision and not say, God, what do you want me to do? It's for me to say, you know what, I don't recognize you as being the authority on this issue, so I'm going to figure this out on my own. It's a huge sign of disrespect. So for us to gain wisdom, number one, we have to respect God's power. Number two, the next thing that you and I can choose to do is accept God's word. Accept his word. See, accepting is not just hearing it, but actually doing something about it. Matthew 7, 24 says, Anyone who listens to my teachings and obeys me is wise. Like a person who builds his house on a solid rock. See, it's not good enough to just know what Jesus tells us to do. If you listen to my teachings and you obey them, then you're wise. So he says, my teachings, my truth, my principles that I've given to you in my word, if you, if you accept this as my word and you listen to them and obey them, that's like building your house on a solid rock. You have a foundation to stand on. There are many of us that never consult God. We, we go to so many different people, and what do you think I should do in this situation? We ask our sisters and our brothers, and what do you think I should do here? And, and some of us even step outside of God's will and, and start asking other people and looking to horoscopes and, and calling on psychics and stuff, saying, I don't know what to do. What should I do? And God's saying, all that sand. You're building your life on a foundation of sand. Instead of coming to me and, and gaining my wisdom, you're, you're building your life on something that the first time a storm comes and blows by, your life is going to crumble. And you're going to find yourself there in a rubble and a mess going, I wish I would have just asked God what his plan was from the very beginning. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the words of Christ in all their righteousness live in your heart and make you wise. God encourages us to be in his word, to let his word be in us. So, so if you're getting up every day and you're spending a little bit of time reading the Bible, you're reading the Psalms, you're reading the Proverbs, uh, then when you face different decisions, you can call back and go, wait a minute, I remember a story where God told us that I probably shouldn't do that. I remember there's a Proverbs that says I, I probably shouldn't go that way, or, or maybe I should go a different direction. It's like, 
we have this stored in our hearts because we accepted his word and, and we can gain incredible wisdom for that. It, it, it's kind of like my wife sometimes will catch me doing something that just annoys her. She rolls her eyes at me. But occasionally, because I'm a little bit thick-skulled, I'll go to the store and I'll buy uh, like a, a toy set or something like that for my girls, and I'll want to put it together. So I'll go out into the garage and get all my tools, and, and I'll, I'll start working on it. She'll, see it. She'll go into the house. Like an hour later, she comes back out, and I have just a mess everywhere, sweat beads dropping from my forehead, tools all over the place, and I throw a screwdriver at the wall. And she goes, well, Dan... Were there instructions that came with that? <laughs> like, but don't even ask that. You know, the very first thing I did was take the instruction manual out and throw it in the trash. You know, that's just extra paper they have to put in there to cover themselves. You know, and it's ridiculous. I laugh at it too because I know how stupid is it that we have the answers right there in front of us, and yet sometimes we go, you know what? I would rather figure this out on my own. God's saying, don't do that. That's not wise. He's saying, I've given you the answers I need, you need for your life. So read my word, accept my word, and keep it. So, number one, we respect God's power. Number two, we accept God's word. Number three, if you want to become wise, you have to invest your time. Invest your time. The Bible tells us in Psalms 90, verse 12, teach us to make the most of our time so that we may grow in wisdom. This, first, this verse, first of all, tells me that I don't have a lot of time. So if I want to become wise, I have to prioritize my time in order to be able to invest it in a way that, that I, can, I can gain more wisdom. If I'm not going after it, if I'm not investing my time to become wise, it's not just going to happen to me overnight. We see in Proverbs 2, verse 2, Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and understanding. Search for them as you would for lost money or hidden treasures. This is talking about working, going after something. Search for them as you would for, lo- uh, would for lost money or hidden treasure. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord, and you will gain knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. These, here's four ways you can invest your time to getting wisdom. First of all, by wanting. Number two, by working. Number three, by watching. And number four, by waiting. Number one, by wanting. If, if you're going to become wise, you have to want to become wise. We, many of us, if you've been in church for any period of time, have heard the story of Solomon. When he became the leader over Israel, God came to him in a vision and a dream and, and asked him, since you've followed me, I want to, to make your dreams come true. So ask me for anything you want to ask me and, and I'll give it to you. I mean, this is a game, as kids, we used to play this game. In the back seat of the car, joking around, go, okay, um, if we had like a genie in a bottle and you got three wishes, what would your three wishes be? Okay, if you just had one wish, what would that be? That's something that we've all kind of played along. And I think for the vast majority of us, if we were to be honest, we'd either ask for more wishes or we'd ask for more money, you know? And um, that's a game we've all played. But Solomon was at a point in his life where he just became king. And looking around at his kingdom and seeing the the enormous responsibility that he had, he wanted more than money, more more than health, more than relationships, more than anything else in his life. He looked around and he goes, God, I don't have what it takes to handle my responsibility. So he gets to this point where he he was overwhelmed by a need. I, I can't figure this out on my own, so God... I want wisdom. If you're going to do something for me, God, more than money, more than anything else, more than health, I want wisdom so I I can do my job right, so I can help people with my life. And if you know the story, God was so pleased with him. Not only did he give him wisdom, he also granted him riches and power uh, beyond what you and I can even imagine. But If Solomon wasn't at a place where he was overwhelmed by a need for wisdom, if he didn't want it, he would have never gone for it. I wonder how many of us have gotten to a place where we look at now the responsibilities we have in life, no matter what stage it is. How how do I help my grandkids get along with their parents and help help them through this situation? How, How do I help my business get through this economic time? We start looking at different areas of our lives and start going, I'm overwhelmed by a need here to know, God, what you want me to do. 
And that's, that's the wanting stage. We've got to want it. Number two, if you want to become wise, you've got to work for it. That's how you invest your time. You work for it. It doesn't just happen overnight. This means studying, reading, praying. It's not just going to, you wake up one time and it'll become, oh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm wise and old. It doesn't happen that way. We talk about the, the wise old man and the wise old woman. I, I don't think you should ever say old woman. That's not very wise. And the, and the wise woman. And we recognize those are people that throughout their lives, they invested time into becoming more wise. They worked at it. So you've got to want it. You've got to work and then by watching, by watching. Wisdom comes by watching. Pride leads to arguments, but those who take advice are wise. You can look around at the world around you and learn from other people. It's something I was taught as a very uh, young child, and I'm teaching my kids now, is to speak less and to listen more. We take in from around us. So what can I learn from other people's mistakes? A normal person learns from their own mistakes. A wise person learns from the mistakes of other people, and a fool keeps repeating the same mistakes over and over and over again. And then we invest our time into becoming wise by waiting. Sometimes it just takes time. No one says, oh, that's a, that's a wise little baby. We're never born wise. We, we grow old and we have experiences, and through those experiences and waiting, God will then begin to reveal to us more wisdom. There are times we ask God for things and He doesn't answer us quite yet. And I wonder if sometimes it's because He's waiting for us to mature just a little bit more so we'd be ready for the answer that He's trying to give us. So choices we can make in order to be able to become wise is to, number one, respect God's power. Number two, accept God's word. Number three, invest your time. And number four, expect God's answers. We all need help in the decisions that we make. In fact, millions and millions of dollars are spent every year on consultation, whether it be going to a counselor or business, uh, businesses hire business consultants to come in to try to help them with the decisions we make. And I wondered, are we taking the time to consult God? James 1.5 says, if you need wisdom, if you want to know what God wants you to do, ask him and he will gladly tell you. He will not resent your asking. What a wonderful promise that is. God's saying, if you want to know what you need to do in this situation, ask me. Ask me. But, but the, the trick to this is the expecting that God's actually going to answer you. Because this is something I, I've done to God my entire life, and I started recognizing it uh, with my children because my children started doing it to me. Where I would ask God a question, and then I would not wait for the answer. And I recognize this because I was sitting in the living room one day, and SpongeBob's playing in the other room, and my daughter comes through and starts asking me, Dad, can I have a snack? And something funny happened on SpongeBob, and I began answering her, yes, you can have a snack, but she turns and is so focused on the TV over here that, that she gets drawn back into the other room and sits back down again. And I answered her, yes, you can have a snack, but she was so distracted, she didn't even expect my answer. So a couple minutes later, she comes back in the room and says, Dad, can I have a snack? It's like, I already answered you. I already said, yes, you can have a snack. But, but she didn't expect my answer. And there's so many times that I'm like, God, I really need to know what to do in this situation. I'm scared. I got I to gotta know what to do. And then my phone rings. So I'm like, oh, I got to take this. And, then, and I'm back on to my day moving on. I wonder how many of us do that. How many of us actually take the time to wait receive God's answer for our life. See, I, I think if we all recognize the decisions we make don't just affect us. They affect our kids. They affect our spouse. They affect our friendships and our co-workers. They affect our employees. They affect our employers. So we need to make wise decisions. And I love that James tells us, if you need wisdom, just ask God. He will surely give it to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray right now in this room that, God, we all need wisdom. In different areas of our lives, we're facing different things. We need to make the right decision. We need to stop making the wrong decisions. And, God, we need help. We don't want to be the people that make mistakes over and over again. And, and God, for those of us in this room, that there's a lot of people counting on us. God, we, we pray that you would help us make the wise decisions that would affect our lives in such a wonderful way. 
thank you for loving us. Thank you for not resenting us to come into your presence and ask you what to do. But thank you for being our Father and our guide. Please watch over us. Give us a wonderful week this week. We love you so much. And it's your precious son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give our God a shout of praise before we leave today. <laughs>